We're expecting some funny moments. Yeah. What's your funniest or most memorable moment from making it? Pretty much every recording session you jam for about two to three to four hours sometimes and it's once every month uh, spread over nearly two years. You can go in quite grinchy, it can sort of interrupt, you know, you're working on another film or you're having a nice time not working for a change and then uh, it just sort of comes out of nowhere and then once you're doing it, it's so much fun. It's really genuinely a lot of fun. The very funny people at Illumination, including our director Scott, you know, whether it's whether it's just cracking a scene or a moment of character or just shooting the breeze and catching up with one another, it's always a good time. That's such a long time you've spent being the Grinch. It is, but oh, but like I say, with these weird gaps, sometimes more than a month, sometimes three months difference and uh, gap rather. So it's it's a strange one. I have been in for a long time. Does that make you feel like particularly attached to that? character? Yeah, a little. Yeah, and to, and to see it all come together is, is a sort of wonderful moment because you just think it's never going to end. You're going to be called back in for another session and, and maybe I will be before the film comes out. It's been a wonderful role to play. Those Dr. Seuss lines must be a bit tricky to get your mouth around. They are, but I think what's good about them is that they have like our good man Shakespeare sort of immediacy because of their rhyme. They were written partly to encourage you know, early uh, literacy. They do that, all of them do that, whether it's you know, the places you'll go or um, any number of the stories. I don't know, it's part of the charm and the magic of it, actually. And uh, there are some pretty tongue-twisting additions that we've added to the original. Did that make for any blooper moments? Do you, you remember any particularly? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, yeah, we're constantly making mistakes. One of the joys of being in a booth with that amount of time is that you, know, you, can, you can constantly right your wrong. What's it like to take over that iconic character? This is a very different cut of the same idea. It's a very different spin on the original tale and it's an animation, pure and simple, in a very modern sense and rooted in some kind of a recognisable reality of ours as well as being as um, crazy as a Dr. Zeus story should be. It's got a lot of, lot of humour, a lot of immediacy, a lot of things that people will recognise, but also fantastical things that will transport people to another place. How can we expect this version to be different to the ones we've seen before? It's very funny. It's moving, just endlessly imaginative, and the level of artistry is phenomenal. The energy of it is sort of unsurpassed, I think. It's just incredible drawing, incredible artistry, incredible technicians making these amazing environments and characters come to life. Great cast and a very, very funny script. Now, everyone has their own way of doing Christmas. I'd yeah. love to know what your Christmas day is like. Christmas day is pretty English, I guess. Yeah, sort of family orientated, food, presents, and yeah, some good cheer. Maybe a bit of church if, if, if the location's right for it, and that's kind of it. Are you a presents in the morning person or after dinner? Usually sometime after the morning, yeah. Any Christmas movies you like to break out? Christmas movies, I like Scrooged. <laughs> I like Bill Murray in anything, really. Um, what are you going to ask Santa for this year? A uh, holiday. Yeah? <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Probably Where's on your list? Anywhere with time and solitude. <laughs> that's, that's that, yeah, that would be it. I have an important question for you. Yes. Would you rather spend Christmas with the Grinch or with Thanos? Definitely the Grinch. Yeah. I mean, you know, the Grinch, he's a converted creature by the end of it. He's a different person to who he begins the story as and his heart swells from being two sizes too small to being just about the right size if not a size bigger. So that would be a nice person to be around if it's after this story. But um, yeah, that's a plot spoiler. There we go. Thanos, mm, not so much. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Um, you've got such passionate fans. I would love to know what your most memorable or strangest fan experience is. I think probably meeting them in Nepal, in Kathmandu, where I was all bearded up and wigged for Doctor Strange at his sort of worst and looking for salvation and Karmataj. And before he meets the Ancient One, doing some street scenes in Kathmandu, thinking, well, we'll, we'll get away with this because you know, I, I don't look much like I normally do. And a couple of mobile phones on the first day, and then it just exploded. And then it was literally like just running around <laughs> like a circus of people. And at one moment where we were just getting ready to set up a shot in, in Durban Square. And this is, you know, this is a country that wasn't it was, it was not long after the devastating earthquake, so to see that much kind of joy literally in the same eye line as some of the temples themselves in that part of Nepal that had been ruined by the earthquake was amazing and surprising and just bemusing, amazing to think, I mean, the reach of Sherlock in particular just seems incredible. What a juxtaposition as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> mad, you know, and, and, and especially when I was trying to be this guy who's all alone, cut and drift, no one knows who he is. 
I'd be out on a limb and then everyone's sort of chanting my name in between takes. Very, <laughs> very, very strange. I'd love to know what you're a super fan of. What I'm a super fan? I've never been obsessed about things. I've, I've kind of been a bit of a butterfly. It's the same with comics and it's the same with actors and performances. I think I'm kind of, I am obsessed with Paul Thomas Anderson. I'm obsessed with Daniel Day-Lewis as well. I think they're both extraordinary artists in our world. You know, I'm obsessed with Olivia Colman. I'm obsessed with quite a few people, I suppose. I haven't collected anything. I haven't collected Olivia Colman. <laughs> Weird that We're such big Avengers fans. What's the reaction been like to Infinity War to you? Amazing. I, my one wish is that I could have actually gone back into a cinema to watch it unfold for an audience, either here in the States, but I was pretty busy slammed into work um, quite soon after the press tour, so I didn't get that chance. But uh, I've just, I've loved it. Yeah, it's been, it's, it's, it's immense. And the success of it, it's, it's fantastic for the people that work so hard on it. And mm. yeah, bring on, bring on the next. What are you most excited about for part two? All of it. <laughs> Not being able to keep it secret? <laughs> yeah. People knowing what the hell's yeah, going on, exactly. probably, maybe.